and welcome to Keep Smiling with Larry Rifkin. I'm Larry Rifkin. I want to talk to you today, and today we have a very special guest. We have Carol Green, who is an author. She is an organizer. She's very involved with the spiritual community. She did a lot of background work and a lot of gathering of information, and she wrote the book, Spiritual Transformation in America, and what it means to all of us. I found this to be a very intriguing book, something that brought me in and, and taught me a lot of information. And I sat down and talked to Carol and thought that this was something that we absolutely wanted to share and bring to our audience. So I'd like to welcome, number one, welcome. Thank you, Carol, for coming in today. Thank you, Larry, for asking me. I appreciate it. And uh, I enjoyed your book very much. I wondered, before we get into your book, tell our audience a little bit about your background and what brought you to this point. Well, I think like many other people, I spent a lifetime searching and uh, I had the unique experience in, I ran Weight Watchers in four states and uh, out of Colorado and had some 400 people that were affiliated with the organization. And I was often invited to weddings, to confirmations, to communion, to funerals sometimes. But I uh, had the opportunity to visit and experience many religions on a very uh, personal level and became intrigued by uh, the variety of religions and started to study uh, religion in general and uh, read a number of books. And the more books I read and the more articles I read, the more interested I was and the more I wanted to learn and uh, started to look for a book. I also noticed that there was a big change going on in the country, that you had uh, many people that had changed religion, that, had, that no longer followed the religion they were brought up in. And I wanted to find something to learn more about that aspect. I couldn't and determined I was going to write a book on the subject. So that was a, a, a major thought to do that and a big undertaking, bigger than I realized. When was this? Well, I, I guess I started around uh, 09 and progressed, uh, maybe, uh, maybe even into uh, 2008 and worked for about two years before I was able to publish the book. That's, the book is very interesting and, and the story is very interesting. I think the premise in your book and, and the way that I read it is that, and, and, and the title is Spiritual Transformation in America. And, and the premise I think is that we're going away from organized religion, the numbers are dwindling, um, of the brick and mortar type of, of churches and temples and, and synagogues and mosques in these past few years, but really it's been a little bit longer than that. It's been the past couple of decades. Um, but I noticed in your book that you had cited the decline in numbers in each one of the religions. And I, I didn't realize that it was across the board. And from your book, I see that it is, that it, it is across the board, that, that a lot of these organizations, it doesn't matter whether they're Catholic or Protestant or Methodist or Jewish or Muslim, we're all experiencing the same decline. Why is that? Well, you have, there's probably a lot of reasons for that, but you have every single mainstream religion in the United States is losing members some more dramatically than others. And you're having, part of that is this shift going on. You've lost, 20, the Cat, Roman Catholic Church, for instance, has lost 22 million members. At the same time, they've gained six million members. So they are, and, and there are some 300 splinter Catholic organizations, some that are 
dominated by priests that have uh, wanted to marry and have left. You have others that ordain uh, women as priests, but you have probably the national Catholic Church of the United States is probably coalescing to be the most significant because they allow gay people without their feeling guilty. They have women that are ordained. So it's, it, it's a change in that aspect. You have other religions that are undergoing schisms. You have, uh, you have uh, 31 Episcopal organizations, uh, 16 Baptist organizations. The same thing is going on, whether you're Methodist or Presbyterian. You have this fragmenting of the various churches uh, where they're splitting over very fine points, whether it's the ordination of women, whether it's uh, whether they uh, allow a gay person to become a minister. You have, uh, uh, this is, all of these uh, philosophies, philosophical premises are causing uh, changes. And they're over very, very fine points. So they might have, all, like I've given the example of all of these Episcopal organizations, they might agree on 90% of the premise, but because of certain aspects, they'll split. You have an example in the Episcopal Church of a Reverend uh, Forrester from the state of Michigan who was an extremely popular individual and was recommended to become a bishop. And uh, enthusiastically by his uh, parish, at the same time, he had been following not only the Episcopal religion, but he had also embraced Buddhism. And some people will say Buddhism isn't actually a religion because of the way they, their perspective on God. But some people will say it's a philosophy. But this uh, priest obviously felt comfortable in being a, uh, uh, both an Episcopalian and a Buddhist. But because of that aspect, he was not. He was nominated to be a bishop, but he was not allowed to be a bishop. You have other things going on where you have a fluidity of people moving from one church to another because they're not so. Other people who are not hung up on dogma. A good example is a woman right here in Sarasota who uh, she and her husband were not Lutherans, but they decided they both were career people, or they both are career people with successful careers and young children, and they decided that the, the uh, preschool at the Lutheran church was the best atmosphere for their children, and so they went ahead and joined that church less interested in the fine point of the dogma or doctrine. You have uh, a priest in uh, Miami, this Father Cootie, who fell in love and decided, and he was discovered with this woman, and he decided to leave and became an Episcopal priest. And so he was comfortable in making that transition and remaining a priest where he could marry. At the, almost the identical time that he moved from the Cat, Roman Catholic to the Episcopal Church, uh, 10 Episcopal nuns decided that the church was too liberal, and they moved and became Roman Catholic nuns. So you have this fluidity at the highest level, as well as the uh, level of the average individual who has opted to move from one organization to another. Yes, and, and I, I agree with that. And I think one of the amazing things that Carol does is she illustrates her points so well and to a point that anybody can understand it. The point that you were just making about small differences, you illustrated with a joke. 
And that joke was was something that people were able to relate to and 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 actually sit down and go, wow, she's right. That's exactly what it is. Because yes, I'm not just religious and I'm not just this and I'm not just this and I'm not just this. And we get to the same point and then there's the smallest detail that splinters us into different areas. Also, I think, I, I wanted to ask you, I think what I hear you saying is not necessarily that the numbers of people involved in, in organized religion are vastly decreasing as much as what you're saying is that they're splintering off into more and more organizations, wider and wider, but are there still the same number of people that consider themselves religious now as there were 20 years ago or 50 years ago? That's a, that's a difficult question. What you have now is you do have a growing number of people who are atheists, although it's a very small number. And you have a, but a much larger number of people who consider themselves spiritual and not religious. But the most significant issue is that there's a huge demographic breakup. Young people today, and I mean young adults, 25 to 45, and I base it on studies that you can read about in the book, want a more tolerant religion. They don't want to deal with all of these fine points. They want to be open. They want to be together. They want to uh, deal, they want a religion that has meaning. And when we're talking about spirituality, you, whether you're within a religion or without a religion, when you're spiritual, you look at, uh, you look at a life built on gratitude, on compassion, on loving kindness, on caring for one another. It's hard to be an angry person when you focus on those principles and find that those are the basis of your life. And uh, according to a wonderful film called Happy, that those are really the elements that make a person truly happy. This is such an interesting um, area that we're discussing and I, I really appreciate it. I, I enjoyed the book and the book is Spiritual Transformation in America, What It Means to All of Us. And you can purchase this book on the website, which is carolbgreen.com, which is listed on the screen right here. Or you can uh, go to Amazon, and you can even go to Amazon and get it in the digital format and put it on your Kindle or on your tablet so that you have it with you all the time. And this is a... a easy read it's not hard to read it's a very interesting it's very informative and i enjoyed it and there's before we go there's more that i wanted to talk to carol about because you're involved with a spiritual community it's centered here in sarasota florida where we are and um it's reaching out to people who are thirsting for information and spirituality for different programs that you're putting together as you know i'm a fan of the of this organization but tell us about it. it's it's the vista organization here in sarasota we're called the vista spiritual center a group of us got together to organize it we meet we have a uh, a meeting the second sunday afternoon of every month at bayfront community center we also have special meetings, like a few weeks ago we had a what we call spiritual cinema. We had a film called Leap, L-E-A-P, and we had a discussion afterwards. We had a discussion leader and talked about the spiritual aspects. We have the Sound Sisters in a special program in late January, but our key program, for instance, in January features three experts on the subject of meditation, Many people want to know more about meditation. They'd like to meditate, but they're really not sure what it's all about. So we have this program on January 13th. But the main thing, we, we felt that what Sarasota needed and what really the entire country needs is a place of oneness. We've become such a polarized society. 
We are so split on so many different issues. We thought whether you have a religion or not, if you want to learn more about spirituality and join a community of people who want to emphasize the things in life that are really important and also lead to a life of happiness. It's not money, it's not status, it's not position, it's not uh, accumulation of wealth, but it is uh, the, just what I mentioned earlier. It is compassion and gratitude and loving kindness, caring and the, being concerned about the well-being of others and being in a community of like-minded people. You, could, you can look us up at vistaspiritual.org and uh, I think we're a pretty dynamic group of very nice people and I've loved being a part of it. I, I, I absolutely enjoyed it also uh, and enjoy the programs, but the most important thing is, is the oneness. Um, you know, that is coming from a place of loving kindness, of compassion, of passion has been really a cornerstone of my life and why we started this company this organization but i find that not just here in sarasota and not just here in the united states but all over there are more people and more people and more people looking for it and as i have said for a long time it's with what i personally am interested in it's spirituality, not necessarily religious. It has one doesn't really interfere with the other one. The spirituality is about us being together, being connected, and coming from, as you say, compassion, passion, love, and joy, and caring about each other. And that's what we hope more and more and more people get involved with. One of the best ways to get started on this journey or to grow further on your path is to pick up this book, Spiritual Transformation in America, What It Means to All of Us, carolbgreen.com. It's right on the screen. Carol is the author of this. She's involved with Vista. She's been my guest today, and I thank you so very much, and I appreciate it. Thank, well, thank you for being here, Carol. Thank you, Larry. It's been a pleasure.